Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Christine Dixon of The Ordinary Sacred, and I'm going to continue reading a passage from Martha Sweezy's Internal Family Systems Therapy for Shame and Guilt. This one is about a client who has a part who uses pornography to, to self-soothe. And I really wanted to, to share this example because in the kind of religious background that I grew up in, the firefighter of pornography was just seen as shameful, evil, terrible, um, uh, something to be feared, right? And I remember um, I knew someone who struggled with pornography and the leaders of the church told them to put a tight a rubber band around their wrist. And anytime they even had the thought to look at pornography, to just thwack their wrist so that they would start to associate pain with the pornography. And I think so much of our culture, that's all they know to do, right? Sometimes these, these uh, particularly firefighter parts can become extreme. They can have negative impact when they're so burdened. And so the only thing people know to do is to punish it out out of a person right use either physical pain or psychological pain of shame um and punish it out and ifs is just so different it's just such a different way instead of trying to force this part out there's a, an understanding that it's there for a reason and there's a curiosity about what's underneath and what if we held to what was underneath? Would you still have to do this? And there's no shame whatsoever. So I really wanted to share this with you. So this is in a section where Martha is talking about the word change and the fact that in IFS therapy, we are not actually trying to get, definitely not trying to force any part to change until it naturally is ready to do that and wants to do that. So she says, protectors need to hear a few things from you up front. Number one, that you're not trying to control or change them. Number two, that exile parts also don't need to change. Number three, you and the client honor their hard work, and you're here to offer them in the exiles they protect the resources of the client's self so that they don't have to keep working so hard in the future. And finally, number four, that they can experiment with new options without making any commitment. After all, being scientific means having a hypothesis and being willing to be proved wrong. So there's a lot of honoring of the autonomy of parts, never forcing anything upon them. So this is an example of a client named Andy. Okay, so here's Andy's firefighter talking. I hate to tell you this, but I'm only here because my wife says she'll leave me if I don't stop looking at pornography. I like it. So how am I supposed to stop? I stop, I start, I do it on the down low, but she's got this sixth sense and she becomes, you know, a cop. It's ruining our marriage. But honestly, I don't know if I can stop. I've been doing it since I was 12 years old. It's just a habit. The therapist is now talking to the firefighter part and says, what do you like about it? He says, I like it, right? And Andy's firefighter says, it's comforting. It calms me down when I feel bad. The therapist reflects back, a part shows you pornography to comfort you when you feel bad. Andy nods, but your wife objects. Andy nods again. If she didn't object, would you have any concerns? So now the therapist is looking for, are there any polarized parts within Andy? Obviously there's a polarized part in his wife, but is there, are there any in, in Andy? So this firefighter says, like what? The, fair, the therapist says, I don't know, right? He's not trying to lead. Andy says, you mean like that I'm not so interested in actual sex anymore? <laughs> and the therapist says, yeah, that kind of thing. Like, is, is there a negative impact? Is there any consequence to this? Andy says, I do feel kind of flat. So I go back for more of the pornography. And it's so hard. I, I hope I can speak frankly. It's, it's harder to have an erection if I overuse pornography. 
The therapist nods. Is that how your wife can tell that you're using it? And Andy's firefighter says, probably, but I don't think I can change. The therapist says, so here's the thing. I am not interested in changing any of your parts. The part who shows you pornography has a good reason. It helps when you feel bad. I don't want us to try to change or control any part who is helping you, but I do want us to help the part who feels bad, right? Because the pornography has said it helps soothe him when he feels bad. So she's getting curious about that part. Andy's firefighter says, but I don't think that part can be helped. The therapist asks why. Andy says, because that's just who I am. So now he's blended with the, the exile. The therapist says, so tell me, Andy, when you feel bad, what do you hear inside? So she's asking, who has an opinion about this young one that's feeling bad? Andy says, I hear you're an asshole. Pardon my language. You're a piece of shit. The therapist says, well, no wonder you feel bad. And Andy nods glumly. When you hear that, what do you believe about yourself? Andy says that I'm a worthless piece of, you know, trash. And the therapist says, so let me sum it up, okay? You have a part who feels worthless and another part who is harsh and calls you names. Andy interrupts and he sounds like my father. The therapist says, and sounds like your father. And you have another part who helps you survive that cruelty with pornography, which is soothing. Andy's firefighter says, yes. All right. So she's, she's recognizing the good intention of that firefighter part. The therapist says, so we don't want to stop the pornography part from helping you when you need help, but wouldn't it be great if you felt good and you didn't need that help? Then the pornography part would be free to do something else, whatever it wanted. It could go back to being who it was meant to be before it had to save you from feeling worthless. Andy's firefighter says, how am I supposed to feel good? The therapist says, I promise it's possible. We would start by talking with your father's voice, that inner harsh critic. Does it belong to you? She asks, I mean, is it one of your parts copying him? Andy considers this and says, yes. So she's checking to see if this is a part of him or perhaps it's a legacy burden um, or, or an unattached burden. But, but Andy says, yes, it's, it's a part of me that's copying him. So the therapist says, this part copies your father's voice and uses his energy. Andy says, yes. And he wants you to know that he can't change. The therapist says, okay, we're not going to ask him to change. You know why? Because he's a good guy. Just like the porno por pornography part, he is just trying to help. Both the critic and the pornography part are trying to help in different ways. So there's a pause while Andy considers this. And then the therapist says, can I ask him a question? meaning the critic, Andy nods. What does he want for you? So again, she's trying to get at the good intention of the critic. Andy's manager critic says, he wants me to stop being such a, the therapist interrupts and says, I know that he's good at criticizing you using your father's energy. In fact, he's great at it. But we're asking him to take a break from doing that right now to tell you why he does it. What are his hopes for you? Andy says that I will be loved. The therapist says, see, there's nothing more important than what he wants for you. I'm curious, do his tactics work? Andy's manager says, well, no but I can't just look at pornography all day long. So again, it's these two parts are polarized, the inner critic and the pornography part. And the pornography part has gotten 
so extreme because it's protecting this pain of worthlessness. And so the critic feels like I've got to counterbalance you by shaming and telling you how awful you are so that you won't be so extreme. That is a burden systems way of trying to achieve balance, right? Extreme part, another extreme part comes in to try to balance, but it's just so much suffering on the inside. And so what the therapist can do is, you know, give this hope that the client self can actually go to what the pornography part is protecting, help it not feel worthless anymore and be helped, then the pornography part doesn't have to be so strong and the critic doesn't either. So, so she has gotten to this good intention of the critic that the critic wants Andy to be loved. Um, but he says, you know, but if I stop, the pornography part will, you know, go on all day long. Um, and the therapist says, he says, that's why I can't stop. And the therapist says, no, you can't. That solution doesn't work except in the very short run. But I can show you a better way if this critic and the pornography part are willing. Andy says, the critic is afraid that Mr. Porn will take over if he softens up. The therapist says, okay, ask Mr. Porn if he can agree to a truce. Andy says, Mr. Porn says, it's a two-way street, buddy. So right now she's helping him facilitate this mediation between these two polarized parts. And they're, it's, it's really like two people hanging out the sides of a boat. And they're like, I'm not going to come in the boat because if I come in the boat, we're going to capsize on your side. Well, I'm not going to come in the boat because if I come in, we're going to capsize on your side. So the self helps them and says, hey, can I take each of your hands and gradually help you come in a little bit together? Because that's another way to achieve balance. Instead of hanging out the sides in extreme ways, what if we came closer together? And I know that you can't do this until what, what you protect is healed, but can you come in and at least see each other and see me as the self so that I can help? Uh, the therapist says, that's right. They would both have to agree and follow through, but we'll start with an easy, quick truce. They could just lay down their arms here when we're all together, where you can be the third party and keep them both honest. Remember, they aren't agreeing to anything permanent, just an experiment to see what's possible for the future. I promise they are going to like having you around, and they can see if you, the Andy who's not a part, can help the one who feels worthless. So then, then they can relax. So again, offering this hope to them, there is a way to help the exile, the one who feels worthless so that you both can relax. And then you can use your energy to do other things if you'd like to, that there's no shaming. There's a recognition that these parts are doing this with good intention. There's, um, there's no forcing of them. It's meeting their concerns and getting curious with them, appreciating them and not forcing anything, uh, just waiting until they feel safe enough, right? Offering an experiment. What if you tried it to see what happens? If you both come in a little bit and let the self work with the exile, just see what happens. I'm not promising anything. You're going to, you know, don't believe me until you see the results. Um, so I thought that was just a beautiful example of working with polarized manager and firefighter and really assuring the system, our goal is not to change you. I know you're doing this for a reason. 